In this week's EV news, Shell announces plans to install 50,000 on-street EV chargers by 2025. Offgem plans an easier way for people to sell energy back to the grid. Lotus confirms they'll build four new all-electric models by 2026. And is the smartphone and electric scooter manufacturer Xiaomi about to take the electric car market by storm? Welcome back to another EV news episode. Once again, I'm asking you to click that like button and if you're new here, subscribe as well. In return for your loyalty, I'm offering you the chance to win a 10 meter Type 2 charging cable. There's a link in the description to my unboxing and review of a 10 meter Max Green charging cable. If you haven't seen that, after you've watched this video, go and check it out and make sure you're entered in that draw. First up, oil giant Shell has announced plans to install 50,000 on-street EV chargers by 2025 via the subsidiary company Ubitricity, who they purchased back in February. Let's check out this article from The Independent, a link to which is of course in the description as always. Shell has announced plans to install 50,000 on-street electric charging points in the UK by 2025. The oil giant said it will support local authorities by covering the 25% of the cost of installation, which is not currently covered by government subsidy. The rollout is part of a plan to help ensure motorists in urban areas who do not have off-street parking can charge their electric vehicles. More than 60% of people living in cities are estimated to not have off-street parking, a fact that is seen as a barrier to the widespread adoption of low emission cars. Amid growing pressure to take action on the climate crisis, Shell is stepping up its efforts to generate and sell electricity. Most of its revenues and profits currently come from fossil fuels, of course. The new charging points will be installed by Ubitricity, a company which Shell bought earlier this year, and they currently have 3,600 charging points in the UK. According to forecasts by the Competition and Markets Authority, around 280 to 480,000 public charge points will be needed by 2030 to support the switch to electric vehicles. David Bunch, Shell UK's chair, said, it's vital to speed up the pace of EV charger installation across the UK. And this aim and financing offer is designed to help achieve that. Transport Minister Rachel McLean said, together with industry and local authorities, we can create cleaner, greener local communities, providing EV charge points for people without off-street parking across the country. Now I'm torn on this, and I would very much welcome your thoughts in the comments. We desperately need investment in infrastructure, and we know that, there's no denying that. But is a huge oil conglomerate really the answer to the problem? Their offer to subsidise those installs beyond the government subsidy that's currently available absolutely smacks of trying to take a monopolistic position, if you ask me. Cash-strapped local authorities are very likely to go for it, but is it the best approach? I do wish that our government was a little bit more careful with how it was throwing these subsidies around. Local authorities take the grants for the install, and then they leave the infrastructure to rot because nobody's willing to pay for the upkeep. And of course, it's not helped by people that take great offence at having to actually pay for public charging. Some EV drivers seem to be convinced that charging should be free or very cheap, and that charging outside of the home should be no more expensive than that five pence per kilowatt hour they can access on very special night rate tariffs like Octopus Go, which is a preposterous notion, of course that's completely out of touch with reality. Companies investing in infrastructure are only going to do so if they're able to see a return on their investment. Setting rates so low that you can't afford the maintenance and you end up with a bunch of faulty, manky equipment that just get this forgotten about, sit rotting. I mean, just look at Charge Place Scotland in some local authority areas, granted not all of them, or the old charge your car stuff that's cluttering council car parks across England, mostly broken, mostly forgotten. I'm deeply hopeful that Shell and these local councils aren't just going to claim a bunch of subsidies for installation and then effectively dump a bunch of e-waste on their streets. But time will tell. Next up, could Ofgem be about to make it easier for EV drivers to sell energy back to the grid? We all have some very effective batteries sitting outside, or at least EV drivers have some very effective home batteries sitting outside our houses, but very few are fortunate enough to actually be able to use those to power the house, given that vehicle to grid or vehicle to home is currently very expensive and a bit of an expensive pain in the backside, only available to a select few by trial programs being run by utility companies. 
Ofgem plans to make it easier for electric vehicle drivers to sell the energy stored in their car batteries back to the power grid as part of a move to make the switch away from fossil fuel more affordable. Under the plan put forward by Great Britain's energy regulator, electric vehicle drivers could earn money by effectively transforming their cars into mobile power plants by releasing power back to the energy network when demand on the, the grid is high. If enough drivers take up the chance to make money from the car batteries by using vehicle-to-grid technology, the UK could avoid investing in new power stations, with the equivalent generation capacity of up to 10 large nuclear power stations being harnessed from these cars. The number of electric vehicles on UK roads is expected to accelerate to an estimated 14 million by 2030, requiring a billion investment to upgrade the electricity grid, but Ofgem hopes that by changing its grid rules, it could unlock big savings for the energy system and for consumer bills. There were about 535,000 electric vehicles, including plug-in hybrids, on UK roads at the end of May 2021. Great Britain's regulator plans to make it cheaper for charging stations to connect to the electricity grid, which should enable more drivers to have access to charge points when they need them. Ofgem will also encourage smart car charging to make better use of electricity when demand is low and power is cheap, before releasing the cheap energy back to the grid using vehicle-to-grid technology when demand rises. Neil Kenward, a director of Ofgem, said the regulator would take a three-prong approach by increasing the use of electric vehicles, smart car charging and vehicle-to-grid technology, which together can help drive down costs for all bill payers. He said electric vehicles will revolutionise the way we use energy and provide consumers with new opportunities through smart products to engage in the energy market and keep their costs as low as possible. Vehicle to home or grid is definitely the way forward if you ask me. It's quite difficult to access at the moment but that should hopefully change over the coming years. It would be great to be able to let your car battery take the slack. When, com when you combine that with tariffs like Octopus Agile, you can use the battery to power your home when energy is really expensive and you can charge it back up when it's cheap helps to balance the demand on the grid and it lowers the carbon intensity as well. I do hope that it becomes cheaper and easier to access that kind of stuff going forward. It sounds like Ofgem at least have it on their radar and hopefully they're going to try and make that a reality. Now moving on to a rather unlikely entrant into the electric vehicle space, Lotus. Long associated with performance cars, they're probably the last brand I'd expect to announce their switch to electric a moment sooner than they absolutely have to. The recent acquisition of a 51% stake by Chinese powerhouse Geely might have something to do with that, of course. Let's take a look at this article from Auto Express. Lotus has plotted out its electric future by confirming it will launch four new electric cars by 2026. A teaser image previews the future Lotus EV lineup, which will be made of five models with the inclusion of the already revealed Evija hypercar. Joining it from 2022 will be a large SUV they've codenamed Type 132, while 2023 will see the arrival of a similarly sized four-door coupe, referred to as Type 133, and probably shaping up as a direct competitor to the Tesla Model S. A mid-sized D-segment SUV known as Type 134, they're really imaginative with this, aren't they, is slated for arrival in 2024. The size of the car suggests that it will rival the BMW iX3, but alongside the two SUVs and the four-door coupe, the brand will stick to its roots with a new sports car, launching in 2026 and also fully electric. It won't be a replacement for the recently revealed petrol-powered Lotus Amira, but it will be sold alongside it. Three of these vehicles will use Lotus's recently announced premium architecture, a fully electric car platform. It's been developed by Geely-owned Lotus for a global rollout of lifestyle-oriented cars, in this case the two SUVs and the four-door coupe. Technical detail has emerged confirming the cars using the premium ar architecture will have wheelbases ranging from 2,998 to 3,100 millimetres, and that batteries 90 to 120 kilowatt hours in capacity are being designed for use within this platform. Lotus has also confirmed that the premium architecture is electrified at 800 volts, like the Porsche Audi J1 platform underneath the Taycan and the e-tron GT. This should mean ultra-fast 350 kilowatt charging, while in terms of performance specifications, Lotus says premium architecture cars will have motor systems capable of propelling the cars from 0 to 62 in less than 3 seconds. 
No further detail on the electric sports car has emerged, but Lotus have previously confirmed development of a new electric sports car architecture platform known interna internally as eSports. This platform will also be used under the next generation Alpine A110. The Lotus lifestyle models will be built in China, surprise surprise, at a new factory in Wuhan due to open later this year. Built at a cost of around 900 million, the brand says that this factory will have the capacity to build 150,000 cars a year at peak production. Lotus has also revealed a new technology subsidiary in the city, revealing images of the new Lotus Technology Campus that will open in Wuhan in 2024. This new technology division has received investment from NEO and Lotus has admitted that both companies may explore the potential to cooperate over the development of future EV tech. Despite this, the UK will remain the home of Lotus sports cars. The brand's existing facilities at Hethel and in Norwich and the UK-based Lotus team will take the lead on developing new performance and sports car models beyond the Avija. A strange move this, isn't it? Yet another performance-focused brand is churning out some SUVs to try and appeal to the mass market. I'm sure the piston heads types will already be frothing at this news, but it's a really good sign, isn't it? And the inclusion of plans for an electric sports car means they'll not be leaving the routes behind either, simply moving with the times. And finally, another Chinese powerhouse announces its move into electric vehicles. Xiaomi, better known for their smartphones and electric scooters, have announced that they have formed an automotive arm, Xiaomi Automobile. Chinese consumer electronics company Xiaomi has officially entered the EV market after completing its industrial and commercial registration in China as Xiaomi Automobile Company Limited. In a recent announcement of the new EV entity, it has revealed that it already has a team of nearly 300 employees. Before today's announcement, Xiaomi has been known as a Chinese electronics company based on an Internet of Things platform. The manufacturer currently manufactures smartphones, mobile apps, laptops, home appliances and even scooters. In recent years, however, Xiaomi's leaderboard status for smartphone sales has dwindled in China. To combat this dip, the company began seeking new outlets to maintain its cash flow as an international manufacturer. Five months later, Xiaomi is now an officially registered EV company, although it is still searching for an experienced partner in the Chinese EV manufacturing sector. According to a report from Gizmo China, they officially announced that the industrial and commercial registration of Xiaomi Automobile Company Limited has been completed. The announcement was made on the company's Weibo page. According to the report, they were successfully registered with a capital of 10 billion yuan, which is 1.5 billion US dollars approximately. And it will be led by Lei Jun, the founder, chairman and CEO of Xiaomi Group. Since announcing its plans to enter the EV market, they claim to have sorted through over 20,000 resumes to build its initial team of 300 employees. The Weibo post also provides a contact email to send resumes to for additional employment opportunities. With a decent sized team in place, they are still searching for a partner in China to get EV manufacturing going. And they have been in talks with several car manufacturers for a partnership, but nothing has materialised yet. Some of the companies include BYD, Great Wall Motor, Wooling Motors and most recently SAIC, MG's parent company. Since announcing entry into EV manufacturing, their management has reportedly already had 85 industry visits in addition to extensive meetings with more than 200 automotive industry veterans. Jun has been recorded saying that Xiaomi is aiming to offer high quality smart electric vehicles to its users globally to enjoy ubiquitous smart life. While Xiaomi has already invested 10 billion yuan into getting the EV wheels moving, its CEO has stated plans to invest upwards of another 60 billion over the next decade to truly make an impact on the EV market in China. It's quite interesting that they seem to be keeping their options open with regards to which car manufacturer they team up with. The electric car market seems to be becoming a rapidly crowded place in China. So their success will definitely depend on how well the finished product comes together. Xiaomi definitely have the expertise in the electronic engineering and the software space, but the car maker they work with is critical here, isn't it? That it's actually going to be nailing these things together. Definitely one to keep an eye on, although like most of the cool Chinese EV stuff, the chances of it actually making it to these shores are pretty slim, I reckon. What do you think? 
That's all we've got time for this week. Let me know in the comments what you think of this week's articles. Does the prospect of Shell taking on a load more of the EV charging market worry you? Are you keen for some vehicle to grid action at home? Or do you, do you think Xiaomi should stick to making phones and scooters? Or are you ready to embrace an all new EV from a Chinese tech company? Many thanks for watching. Make sure you enter the Max Green 10 meter cable competition if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time.